which is Salaamu Alaikum. Uh, today we will go for the TGA diagnosis, the first part of this lecture, and we will go about the clinical picture and how to diagnose and use the cross imaging and the echo to diagnose the TGA. As mentioned before, by hyphen TGA or transposition um, grid artery, TGA is the acronym for, uh, for that, it's transposed the grid artery, it's really big family, it's extended family. Today we will not talk about all of them, but we will talk about that TGA physiology. What we meant by that TGA physiology is discordant ventricular arterial connection. This is point number one in this lecture. When I meant by transposed grid vessel, I meant connection. That each ventricle is connected to an artery. We should have a connection between the ventricle and the, and the artery. But what's wrong in that? That each ventricle is connected to the round artery. So normally the LV is given aorta, but in that case, LV will gap pulmonary. And right ventricle normally gap the pulmonary artery. And that condition in transpose the great arteries in aorta. Okay. And the atrioventricular connection is normal. In that family, we have TGA with intact ventricular septum and TGA with VST. Usually, we call the TGA with intact ventricular uh, uh, septum a symbol TGA. If we could say that there is a symbol TGA, TGA is really a complex disease, but we gave it the name of symbol TGA, we meant it's just transposed of great arteries. We don't have any additional lesion with that. We call it symbol TGA. And this is uh, consisted of 75% of the patients. And what about the other 25 patients? It will be complex TGA. Either TGA with VSD, and this is the majority, is 20% of this patient, or TGA with VSD and outflow obstruction of the LV, doesn't matter where is it, is 5%. Is that clear? We will talk about the TGA, simple TGA, and the complex TGA. We will not go through this extended family at this lecture. So we are talking about those patients. Okay. What about the clinical picture of the TGA patient? To understand the clinical picture of TGA patient, we have to go through some terminology. We will go through it now. This is the TGA circulation, right? Okay, this is the left ventricle, giving the pulmonary. This is the wrong artery, discordant. And this is the right ventricle, giving the aorta, while the right atrium and the right ventricle are normally connected. Okay. So the circulation in that TGA will be in series or parallel? Parallel. So what does it mean by parallel circulation? That we have two separate circulation. We have, we have pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. Here, this is the pulmonary circulation, starting from the pulmonary artery, ending in the pulmonary vein. And this is the systemic circulation going to the aorta, to the cava. So actually, if you have a drawing, it will be like that. Left atrium, giving the mitral valve, giving the left ventricle, going to the pulmonary artery, back to the pulmonary veins, back to the left atrium. And here, aorta will give the systemic veins, right atrium, tricuspid, right, right ventricle, and again to the aorta. This is how the TGA physiology or TGA circulation will be. And this is, will lead to the oxygen depletion in the systemic circulation by time the circulation will stop. So this condition is incompatible with life. Nobody will present it to you by this um, absolute circulation like that. To have a baby with TGA that's still alive, we should have some blood goes between the circulation. So the aorta should receive some oxygenated blood and pulmonary artery should receive some deoxygenated blood to give it some oxygen blood. So that's what will happen, that some blood goes from the pulmonary circulation to the aorta, and some blood goes from the systemic circulation to the pulmonary circulation. When I asked you before the lecture, you call it shunt, that we have some shunting between, between both of them. Okay, we will stop at that time, at, at that terminology, and we will revise it. The site that sh the blood cross between the both circulation, it could be the intra atrium, either PFO or ASD, 
or between the ventricles. So some oxygenated blood from here going there as some <coughs> oxygenated blood goes back across the VSD or the BDA. This is the three sites where the blood can come and go from the bottom. Here comes um, an important information in the TGA physiology, maybe also in other lecture in the door, double outlet right ventricle. We will go back to this uh, terminology. We have shunting, mixing, blending, and streaming. To understand the physiology of TGA, we have to understand this terminology in a clear way. What we mean by shunt, the blood goes back to the same circulation that it came from okay we will go in more details now what we mean by mixing that exchange blood where it goes from one circulation to the other sounds familiar you mentioned something like that that the blood should goes from one circulation to the other what circulation that we have we have pulmonary circulation that started from pulmonary artery and the ending by pulmonary vein and we have also systemic circulation that started by aorta and they ended by the post cava, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Clear? Okay. This is an example for ESD with normal circulation. That I have circulation in series and I have an ESD. So I will trace now the blood and I will decide does it go from the same circulation, stay in the same circulation, or it cross from circulation to up? Is it clear? So now we have a fixed amount in the left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, aorta, and pulmonary, and the blood will cross the, the ESG here. Okay. We will trace it. So the extra amount of the blood that cross the ESG normal circulation, it will end in the right atrium. Then the right ventricle, it receives an XA plus A from this circulation. And pulmonary artery will receive X and A. Then pulmonary artery will give it to the pulmonary veins again, X and A. In the left atrium, X will go for the left ventricle, then to the aorta, and then to the cava. When it comes to the right atrium, X plus A will join again. If I ask you, where does the extra blood went from where to where? The A amount went from? Exactly. So the extra amount went from the pulmonary veins to the pulmonary arch. So is it go from the, the same circulation to the same circulation or does it cross between one circulation to the other. Same circulation. The blood goes back from the same capillary or the same vascular bed that it comes from. What we call this? Shunting. So ESD, BSD, BDA in normal circulation, in the serous circulation, it is shunting. Why is it shunting? Because the extra amount of the blood came from the same vascular bed and ended in the same vascular bed. We call it recirculation. So something equal recirculation, that I have the blood from the pulmonary veins and it ended in the pulmonary artery. If you do this exercise for the BSD or BDA, you will find that blood is coming from the pulmonary veins and they ended in the pulmonary artery. So it has come and go back again for the same circulation. Okay. The, this is an ASD and a TGA. Okay, first, first, is it a TGA? Yes, this pulmonary vein to the left atrium to the left ventricle, giving the pulmonary artery. Here is the discordant connection. And here is superior vena cava, inferior vena cava to right atrium, right ventricle, and then the aorta. Aorta receiving deoxygenated blood, while the pulmonary artery is receiving oxygenated blood. And now we will have. Some oxygen, as we said, in the TGA, because it's compatible with life, we should have some blood goes between the circulation. Some oxygenated blood will go here, and some deoxygenated blood will go. Okay, so for the oxygenated blood, we have some oxygenated blood, A, went from the pulmonary veins to the right atrium, right ventricle, and aorta. And this oxygenated blood will circulate in the body, 
and back to the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava as oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood. And this deoxygenated blood will cross across the ASD back to the left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, and then back to the uh, pulmonary, then back to the pulmonary veins. This amount went from the pulmonary veins to which artery? Our the same circulation or the other circulation? Other circulation. And this amount from the cava went to the pulmonary or to the aorta? Is it the same circulation or the other circulation? Okay, so the blood is crossing between the both circulation. We call this is mixing. So we call it mixing. To be more accurate, we call it intracirculatory mixing. Is that clear now? So to recap, shunting, we have some amount that travel between the circulation. If it's a travel in the same circulation, we call it shunting. If it travel from one, one circulation to the other circulation, we call it mix. Is it clear? Shall I repeat it? So A is D, B is D, B, D, A. A normal circulation, in serious circulation, is shunting. A is D, B is D, B, D, A. In TGA physiology, we call it mixing. So back to question number one. TGA physiology is incompatible with life unless we have mixing, mixing or unless we try to improve this mixing. Uh, a is D, B is D, B, D, A. There is no shunting in TGA. Is that clear? So we will have blending and streaming. We will come into it. Okay. So the clinical presentation for a TGA with intake ventricular septa, first question, this baby is cyanotic or acyanotic? Cyanotic. cyanotic. Why is cyanotic? Because it is a circulation. It's with mixing. Okay. So severe cyanosis from the first day. Actually, we have all the calls from the TGA from the NICU. So on the first days of life. TGA should be suspected when we have a cyanotic patient does not improve to the oxygen setup. Had him told uh, you on the, on the previous lecture that when you have a cyanotic baby, usually you put oxygen. This is a correct behavior. Actually, we encourage people to do that. But when you notice that baby is getting lower and lower in oxygen, you should suspect that this is a TGA and stop immediately the oxygen. Why you should stop the oxygen immediately? Because it's a potent vasoconstriction for the BTA. So in practice, suspect TGA. TGA incidence actually is not that low. In the first days of life, if you have a, a flu child that knows, does not improve with oxygen, suspect it is a TGA. Okay. Clinical presentation, this is a simple TGA, right? You remember that when we call simple, if any TGA will be simple. Mm -hmm. It is TGA with intake ventricular septum. If you have a TGA with large BSD, okay, BSD is a site of? Mixing. Exactly. The site of mixing. If I have a large BSD, then I have mixing. enough mixing. Mm -hmm. Then I expect this child to be blue or bluer than the simple or Less blue. Less, blue. less blue. So this patient have better mixing because we mentioned now that we have mixing. Some oxygenated blood will go easier to the aorta and some deoxygenated blood will be back again to the pulmonary. So this baby, he, he will not be fully saturated. It will not be 90. It will be somewhere in 80s, but it's less slower than the simple TGA. And he might develop the congestive heart failure because of the overflow to the pulmonary artery. Why I expect the overflow to the pulmonary artery? Lower, lower, lower resistance, exactly. So preferential flow to the pulmonary might be congested. Actually, most of the cases goes up. But what if that I have a TGA with a large VSD? Large VSD might be that absent of one third of the set and still very fluid. <coughs> Okay, TGA with large BSD with currently I said good mixing, but I will change the terminology. That here we have oxygenated blood, and we have here deoxygenated blood, and this is a, a, a big, big BSD. Um, one point: if you have a small BSD, like a drop out or something in that, we call it simple mm -hmm. TGA. We meant by intact by BSD that large BSD with hemodynamic significance. So simple TGA, it is TGA with intact septum 
or tissue ear with really small VSD that between the dynamic insignificance. So I have here VSD. Actually, this single ventricle or common chamber that we have will receive blood from left atrium and right and receive blue blood and it will mix. It will actually, it will blend. Uh, yeah, um, it will be like somewhere, this is 100 and this is 60, will be somewhere in the 80s and each pulmonary artery and aortic artery will receive something like it is that why we expect a better mixing okay remind me again what is the definition of mixing okay so actually here is not mixing we said that intracirculatory mixing that blood goes from one vascular bed to the other but actually here doesn't doesn't happen we have some 10 red red uh, red uh, red blood from here 10 red blue from here actually it's blended with each other so in that case when we have a common chamber we didn't call it the common terminology mixing what happened here that is in the common it's blending we have a common ventricle that received liberally the oxygenate and the oxygen blood blended that blend and it goes to the pulmonary artery and the aortic artery. Actually, we use it to call it mixing, but it's not mixing. Mixing means that it shunt from one vascular bed to the other vascular bed. It might be in the small ASD, small VSD, small BDA. In that case, it's more elegant to say it's blending. Okay, clear for now? Sometimes, although that we have a large VSD, but the circulation goes like that. Oxygenated blood from left atrium, oxygenated blood goes for the left ventricle, ignore completely that there is a VSD and goes again to the pulmonary artery. And you hear deoxygenated blood in the right atrium, deoxygenated blood in the left and right ventricle, and deoxygenated blood in the aorta. We call this circulation as stream. That although that we have the, the blood from the both circulation go to a common, common, uh, chamber, but they didn't blend. Just that each uh, each stream to the the blood vessel that it has. So we call it streaming. And streaming means that blood circulation from the both circulation met in the same chamber, but they didn't completely blend like that. Streaming might be useful, might be not useful, favorable or non-favorable. We will not talk about the favorable. Uh, streaming, but just keep it in mind that sometimes streaming is useful. But in tissue physiology, do you think this is a useful streaming? Oxygenated blood go to pulmonary artery back to the pulmonary vein, and deoxygenated blood goes to the aorta back to the systemic. So actually, this is a parasitization. So streaming in the tissue physiology is bad streaming or unfavorable streaming. Is that clear? So to recap. To recap, we have shunting, the blood goes from one vascular bed to the same vascular bed, from pulmonary veins to the aorta, or from the systemic, uh, from the cava to the, uh, um, to the aorta, from pulmonary veins to pulmonary, or from the cava to uh, the aorta. Mixing means that the blood cross the circulation, comes from one circulation to the other. Blending means that both circulation goes for a common chamber, and they blend with each other. Streaming is the opposite. The blood comes from the both circulation, but it in a common chamber, but it didn't blend. Just stream to the blood vessel. And streaming, we have a favorable streaming and unfavorable stream. So back to this question. If you have a TGA with large VSD that presented very blue, you expect it? Streaming. streaming physiology. Is it clear? Although that I have a side for a good side for mixing, but for a reason or another, they didn't blend with each other, and we have to intervene in that child. Is it clear until now? What is the difference between shunting, mixing? There is no shunting in TGA. In TGA, we might have mixing, or you, we have to have mixing. We might have blending, we might have stream. Okay? Okay. This is the historical and for the exams, just X-ray and TGA, assembled TGA. Usually we have superior mediastinal narrow compared to the heart. 
and actually this narrow medicinal due to the barrier aorta and pulmonary so actually anterior posterior relationship of both of them they call it egg on side or egg on its strain and this is historical just to find it or for the exams very usual uh, useful to have this one in chest x-ray now we will go for the role of imaging in TGA. Any question about uh, what we have? Is it clear? I know it's difficult, but if you understand the physiology of TGA physiology, it will make it easier to interpret the clinical presentation. Okay, as I said, we have a simple TGA, TGA with ventricular system, or where it's very small BSD that have no effect on the hemodynamic, or complex TGA, TGA with large BSD, TGA with large BSD and palpitation, TGA with large BSD and LEBUT obstruction. And today I will talk about the checklist that you should have at the clinic about each type of them. And we will not go for post-operative, post-operative evaluation will be uh, part two, inshallah. Okay, we will start with TGA with intact ventricular septum, the simple TGA, what I should do. Okay, I have to find the diagnosis. I have, what, what is the diagnosis of the TGA? How I, how I diagnose TGA? Ventricular arteria discordant. But I have to have each ventricle have a connection to the artery, but it's the wrong artery. In that case, I have to evaluate the mixing and correlate it to the clinical condition. If it's poor mixing, I have to work to improve it. And this is acute emergency cases. We have to do it. Um, in the peripheral sites. I mean, not in tertiary centers, but in peripheral sites. We will talk about the coronary arteries and how important they are. And we will talk about the LV conditioned or not. And we discuss what is the conditioning, but we will come again. Okay. To find the diagnosis of transposition of the great artery, you have to establish ventricular arteria discordant. And this is enough by it. So it will be surprised to send the progress imaging, either CT or MRI, to find a diagnosis. So this is a simple diagnosis, should be coined by it. Okay, this is a subcostal view. This is uh, the liver, and here we see uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, and we see from the left ventricle coming an artery that bifurcate to the left and right, and this artery is pulmonary. <coughs> If you find that connection, left ventricle is giving pulmonary, this is the discordant ventricular arterial connection, and here up that left right ventricle giving an arching vessel, this is aorta, so we coined the diagnosis, this is a TGA, transposed big arteries. This is a barostelnar view, so this is left atria, this is a right, a left ventricle, this is the right ventricle, and you see here this is well, a vessel with a branch, so this is pulmonary, and this vessel does not give any branching, it's arching, so this is an aorta, it is discordant uh, ventricular arterial connection. Is it clear? Now we have a question Does transposed great arteries equal to malposed great arteries? Okay, no, both are different um, definitions. Transposed great arteries means that aorta and pulmonary were displaced across the ventricular septum. So, if I would expect the aorta to be from the LB to the left of the, uh, of the septum and expected the pulmonary to be on the right, so actually they transposed. Definition of transposition of great artery is abnormal ventricular arterial connection. So in transposition of great artery, each ventricle giving a great vessel. So transpose of great arteries means abnormal connection between the ventricle and the great arteries. Is that clear? So ventricular arterial discordant is transposition. When I said mal goes the great vessel, I meant the abnormal position of pulmonary in relation to the aorta. Normally, pulmonary is anterior and to the left. This is the normal, the, no, the normal position of the aorta and pulmonary. When this position changes, I describe my both. So for example, when I said double outlet RV with TGA, 
I can understand that you describe a physiology, but this is not anatomically corrected. Because transposition means that ventricle get, each ventricle give an artery. If you said that both of the arteries coming from the, from the right ventricle is not TG. Is that clear? So left ventricle have to give the pulmonary and right ventricle have to give the aorta to call it trans, to transposition. With each transposition, I have a malbose degree vessel. With each transposition, I have a malbose degree vessel. But it's not necessary to have a malposition with transpose. Is that clear? Transposition of grid arteries, we describe connection, ventricular arterial connection. Malbose the grid vessel, it is in the TGA, but also in other diseases. I just described. So if I see this picture, what I describe here? Transposition of a grid artery because it's connection. But if I say, if I see only this picture, this is two grid vessels in the barrier because I see them in, 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 uh, in, uh, in short axis, some coronaries comes from the vessel, from the above vessel. So this is out and this pulmonary and this relation is malbose. So if I see this picture only, I couldn't say it is transposition. It is malbose the grid vessel, but the connection between the ventricle and the artery is transposed with this person. We use both of them liberally and people understand, but from academical point of view, transposition is ventricular arterial discordance, is connection, but malbos, we describe the relation of the vessel to each of us. With each transposition, I have malbos, but it's not the vice versa. Is that clear? Evaluation of mixing in a simple TGA. What is the definition of a simple TGA? So we don't have a BSD. Or we don't have a hemodynamic significance BSD. Then the site of mixing will be? A0, BDA. So I have to check in each simple TGA, the saturation, you will be blue. But I have to check the site of mixing, the BDA, and the ASD slash, it is small ASD, it's B4 or not. Okay, BTA present in 50% of the TGA in the first week. So this is the normal, like normal population, they will have a duct. When it's large, so we have a good mixing across it, so they will present it to you less blue. They will not up to 90s, let alone they will not be fully saturated, they will be somewhere in the 80s, high 70s and that. But no, they will not be in the 50s or 60s saturation. If it happens sudden closure for the BDA, or you help the BDA to close by giving the baby oxygen, it will get lower and lower and lower. If the cyanosis is due, is due to chest cause, when you give the baby oxygen, cyanosis will decrease. But when it's getting lower and lower, just expect this TGA and stop oxygen. Oxygen is very potent uh, vasoconstriction for the blood. Okay. Again, it's very easy to get uh, the flow of the duct. This is again a transposition, left ventricle giving a pulmonary, a branching vessel, and this is the right ventricle. And here, some red flow going in the pulmonary. So the flow is blue in the pulmonary because it, um, uh, it's going away from the, 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 the knob. But we have some red flow here. This means that we have a blood coming into the pulmonary. Is it clear here? Is it clear? this red color we have here blue color this going away from the probe from the left <coughs> ventricle to the pulmonary that's why it's blue but we have some red colors here that means that we have a blood coming from down to above is it clear here uh, do you see it okay we can see it in other view what we call this uh, this view it's showing Malbose degree vessels. Doesn't, it does not show a transposition, but it does just show the malbose degree vessel that we have aorta and with some angulation we have the pulmonary here. Again, we expected the flow in the pulmonary to be red or uh, blue. The flow is going that way. That way. Is that two or away from, from the no? So it will be. And this red flow expecting that we have an additional flow going inside that, so this is a duct. 
the clear that we have some red flow here. Okay. Okay, the second side of mixing is P of O or ASD that we have here fenestration between the left atrium and the right atrium, and we have some flow going in both directions. So oxygenated blood mix with the aorta, the oxygenated blood goes back to the bulbum. Okay, first line of therapy, if you see a blue baby, just to try to improve the mixing according to the scenario. So if you are in peripheral area, just start the prostaglandin. I can talk about the prostaglandin and that. You start the infusion, it's a 10 to 20 mic per kg per minute if possible. Uh, then you decrease uh, the doses because prostaglandin have a side effect, decrease the respiratory rate and it might end that you have to ventilate the baby, decrease the blood pressure and lead to some edema in the tissue and this not will be the best option for the surgeon to go with a high dose of prostaglandin. However, this is a quick, um, easy to do it in the, in the peripheral area, but this is not a stable <coughs> option to do because diagnosis of TGA means that you have to correct it surgical. So you have to transfer the baby to tertiary center and uh, you, it will not be easy just to transfer with peripheral line with prostaglandin. It will not be stable, but it's easy and quick to do it until you establish the other line. Okay. In case of that you have a restricted flow, like the small PFO that uh, we see, we have to increase the size of that PFO or do the balloon atrial septostomy. The famous name of this procedure is Rushkin. Okay, this is a diagram how to do with the Rushkin. Rushkin is a common used procedure in pediatric cardiology. It's done nowadays uh, at bedside um, uh, in the NICU guided only by the echo. In other days, we do it under the floor or for the cast, but now it's easy, and uh, all the pediatric cardiologists know how to do it. They go from the femoral artery to the inferior vena cava. Here, it will end in the right atria. They cross the BFO to the other side, the left atria, by a deflated balloon. Then they inflate the balloon in the left atria. You understand what's going? So it's going from the inferior vena cava to the right atria. All the babies have a BFO. Actually, the normal rate, like um, more than 25% will have it. They cross it by deflated balloon and they inflate the balloon in the left atria. And they, in a horrible way, just, just uh, they, they drag it, just drag, they, 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 they just drag from, from the left atria, inflated balloon goes to the right atria, they got a, a good instruction, just deflated in the inferior vena cava, just not to stop the circulation because it's inflated balloon and you have deflated in the inferior vena cava. You understand what is what's going on? Actually, actually, it's horrible. This is how we do it. Uh, you see it? So this is, they deflate the balloon. This is inflated balloon in the left atria. So it will end the rupture of the balloon or uh, they do it multiple times until they have a, a free communication between both of them. You understand that? It's a, it's a, a kind of percutaneous septectomy. It's actually it's not septectomy, but they try to do it several times, <coughs> several times by inflated balloon in the left atrium and just drag it to the other side. Okay. The good rashkin or good balloon septectomy should be like that. That I have, we don't have numbers, but I should have a pre-communication between both of them that I have laminar flow and I should have no gradient between the left atrium and the right atrium. Don't expect the gradient to be 20 or 30, just venous. It, it shouldn't be more than two or three. If it's five or six, you have gradient. You should secure um, a, a good intra communication. You should secure laminar flow across it, back and, the, uh, and, back and the forth, and no gradient across it. Actually, the first, uh, I do like this sentence. It was in, uh, in late 90s. Actually, uh, Mullins described, uh, it's one of the famous uh, intervention cardiologists, and uh, we have uh, many casters that called, uh, and she's is called by Mullins. He described the initial response of this report, varied between admiration and the hurt. Actually, it's terrible. In either cases, the procedure steered the imagination of invasive cardiologists throughout the entire cardiology world and set the stage 
for all future intracardiac intervention procedures, the true beginning of pediatric and adult intervention cardiac. Actually, they deserve it. They deserve it because they save many, many children where they just have no option. Is it clear about the Rashkan? One of the most impressive intervention in the pediatric cardiology. When it comes about the coronary arteries, for, for a reason that it, uh, it had been written in a funny way, uh, a single and plural. Okay, is it important to have a much sliced CT like that for a TGA baby before going to the operation? Okay, yes, and uh, the other police said it's no. Okay, it's nice to know the anatomy of the coronary. It's, uh, it makes uh, the surgeon life easier. But actually, Prof stated uh, a nice statement, no coronary and artery anomalies will make any child a switch. So it's good for the surgeon to know uh, something about the coronary, but it's really, really, really not fundamental because there is no anatomy will make the coronary, the, a child, to change our decision. So it's nice to have the coronaries. Prof wrote a very uh, nice uh, paper, I think Hatem uh, showed you, on, on nine patients, but he described all the types of, uh, of coronary from type A to type uh, E. It's very nice and very impressive work from Prof Fahu. But actually, it's nice to have it, but it's not mandatory. There is, we, 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 we don't know until now any coronary anomaly that make our decision that this child is unswitchable. So coronary artery anatomy, very good, as Hatem mentioned before. And uh, they came from facing sinuses. Facing sinuses means that the sinuses from that sinuses from the aorta that it's uh, in front of uh, of the pulmonary artery. One uh, type of the coronary uh, of the coronaries that we would like to know about it, the intramural type of the coronaries. Actually, it's not, it's not common with TG, it's common with Tausing Bank, with the dorsal uh, with, with subalmonic uh, BSD. This type, uh, how can I say it, had to make the surgeon difficult, a bit difficult, but again, again, it's switching. So my advice, don't consume many times about that. If you are an imaging part, like in a pediatric cardiologist, train the pediatric cardiologist or train the uh, uh, congenital CT, uh, CT person, you will learn enough about the coronary, but if you are in peripheral area, you have to do more fundamental work than that. Just coin the diagnosis in a correct way, establish a good mixing, don't worry about it. Okay? Now, we will come to the, the, the terminology, it will be conditioned or not. As I mentioned before the lecture, what we meant by conditioned LV or not, we ask ourselves, this LV is able to bump against the systemic circulation of that patient. So whenever, it's not about how big or how small the LV in comparison with the, uh, with the RV, you never ask this question in concordia ventricular arterial connection. If the LV is supporting the aorta, so this is not question about condition. I give you an example about a large, v, a large ESD or severe pulmonary incontinence. Surprisingly, you will find that RV is twice or treble the size of the LV. But we never ask ourselves about is it conditioned or not. It's not about the volumes, but it's if the LV is supporting the aorta, you will not ask yourself for that. But in TGA, in TGA, in TGA case, LV is supporting. Pulmonary. So here in the TGA patient, we ask about ourselves: Is that LV still able to support the aorta? Is it clear? If the LV is supporting the aorta, if it's very small, it's very deloaded, you, you don't ask yourself about is it conditioned or not. It is conditioned as long as it's supporting the aorta. But in TGA case, it's supporting low pulmonary, low low pressure circulation. So we ask ourselves. If this LV is still able to contract against the systemic um, pressure or not, usually it's a rule of thumb that LV will be a in TGA will able to support systemic circulation if the patient is around how old? Three weeks. Three weeks. 
So if if the baby is around, is younger than 20 year, 20 days, it goes without saying. It is still the photo memory of the LV. Who it will recover to support systemic suppression. We started to ask this question: if the child is older than three weeks. Actually, this is not the first world uh, problem anymore. TGA is easy diagnosis by fetal egg. So they expected a child of TGA that will be delivered in tertiary center. So in one day or two days, actually they will send it for arterial switch. The question about is it conditioned or not, actually it is our country's problem. Where the TGA present late, so they late presented, so still ch it's a challenging in our country. So we have a TGA that um, 32 days old, so he relatively missed the boat, he, um, a, a week older than wh what we want. So we started to ask about is it LD still able to support the systemic circulation or not? In other words, is LD still conditioned or not? So, for, do you hear about the LV mass more than 35 uh, gram per meter square? Anybody uh, raise hand? Hear about that? No? Okay. This is a famous uh, statement in uh, the pediatric cardiology. They said if the LV mass, the myocardial mass, is more than 35 uh, gram per meter square index to the surface area, so this baby will be conditioned. Hear about that, uh, Reem, about uh, that uh, number? Okay, so actually this comes from this paper. This uh, a famous, a very famous overrated paper that um, uh, it done by a French group in 2001. Uh, the title was Surgical Management and the Indication of Left Ventricular Retraining in Arterial Switch for TGA with Intact Septum. If you look in that uh, literature, the aim of this article to answer uh, the points is looking retrospectively in 22 patients, only 22 patients underwent LB retraining for TGA, simple TGA. Between the period between 92 and uh, 2000, they got 22 patients with TGA that underwent LB retraining. What do, uh, what do you mean by LB retraining? They put a band just to train the LB to just uh, to exercise the LV again. In the same period, actually, this was very, very heavy program for TGA. They have 470 patients with TGA with interventricular inter septum. They went directly for arterial switch uh, uh, immediately. Okay, they look back in that. Actually, how they calculate the lift ventricular mass, it was an estimation. It was by echo. So actually, they didn't measure the lift ventricular mass. What they did? They constant, they multiply it by lift ventricular in the systolic dimension, posterior wall, interventricular septum, and they gave it um, that uh, for body surface area. So the first key point in that is not measuring the lift ventricular mass. They estimate the lift ventricular mass through this equation. So they didn't measure it, they estimate it. And for a reason or another, she just choose the number 35 gram per meter square to be the inferior limit to indicate LV training in the majority of patients. Okay, LV mass in that, uh, in, in that 22 patient was 12 to 40 gram per meter square. We have some critical analysis for this paper. For the age, 17 patients were older than the three, uh, three weeks. So we have remaining five patients they were from nine days to eight months. So actually in eight, the, in nine days, you shouldn't, shouldn't worry about the LV mass because it is evidence-based, it is still conditioned. And more, two patients were younger than two weeks. They found reduced LV mass, it was 16 and 20 gram. So in that young babies, we didn't question the LV mass. Actually, we question your equation. If your estimation for the LV mass is correct or, or not, they reported in these two young patients that they have reduced the LV mass and they didn't explain it. 
So actually, I didn't, I didn't question the babies. I questioned the equation about the estimation. Moreover, the two patients, one have relatively muscular VSD, and the another one, they have multiple muscular VSD, where the pressure is equivalent in both ventricles, and they have severely decreased left ventricular mass. Then again, it couldn't be the right case. We have severe problem with the equation that they choose to do with as left ventricular mass because the young babies shouldn't have reduced mass, and the babies with VSD, unrestricted VSD, shouldn't have a question about their left ventricle, it is conditioned or not. During the same period, we have 12 patients where the left ventricular mass, according to their points, between 20 and 30 grams per meter square, they went directly to the arterial sweat. Only two failures, only two failures. One have an ECMO and one died. So 10 patients with dim, dim, low, left ventricular mass went smoothly to the arterial switch and they didn't include them in the study. So actually we have patient, 10 patients that they have left ventricular mass lower than 35 and they have a successful arterial switch about, uh, about them. This is some, uh, some documents, uh, some paragraphs from the discussion. They said, Ironically, that inferior limit used to indicate left ventricular retraining has been 35. The value is quite uh, arbitrary and can be discussed. Nevertheless, it was satisfactory landmark in our clinical practice. They just choose it. We don't know the answer, but I think that it's premature to say that left ventricular mass at 35 is the correct because we haven't tested the hypothesis. So again, this is a very overrated paper to do with left ventricular mass. And actually, just because it's the only paper, because this problem is not the first world problem in your, in, anymore. So actually, we don't have enough data about that. It's not investigated because it's not their problem anymore. So actually, this is the only publication and it's word by mouth. Everybody started to say, if left ventricular mass more than 35 uh, gram per meter square, it's enough but as we, went through critical analysis for this paper. This paper have multiple, multiple, multiple questions that haven't been answered. It's a very small uh, population, it's 22. They didn't describe why they choose the 35, just that they choose it because it, it was satisfactory for their statistics. And actually, four patients are not explained. Two were too young to have reduced mass, and two have a BSD, significant BSD, and still have reduced mass. <coughs> and I think the a key point in that paper, the 10 patients have lower left ventricular mass, calculated or estimated mass, and they went under successful arterial switch with no problems about that. So the answer is, we don't know about the answer about the left ventricular condition or not. So uh, depend on the banana shape of left ventricle, that's really small, it's very subjective, and it's dependent on the period condition. We can ignore the left ventricular mass in small babies in between one or two months and just go for ECMO, plan the ECMO about that. But I think the most important point that we would like to circulate this message, we need prospective study with controlled randomized multi-center studies in our countries, maybe other country, other middle or low income countries like, like what we have in our country, to measure the left ventricular mass in developing countries and just face our problem because I said it's not the first world problem anymore, but it's our late presented problem in that. Here, we, I can suggest the rule of cardiac MRI because cardiac MRI, it does not estimate the left ventricular mass. This is um, a picture of uh, TGA. This is the battery circulation by MRI. It's just a copycat for, uh, for the echo, but the MRI calculate the left ventricular mass. By softwares that we have, we have left ventricle and we have right ventricle, and we can draw the contours. The red one is the endocardial contours. The green one is the epicardial contours. And softwares subtract from each other, and they add that from the base to the apex, and we measure the left ventricular mass. Back, flashback to the paper, the published paper, they estimate the left ventricular mass by using the, the thickness and use the dimension which is very dependent to the B-load condition, we didn't measure the left ventricular mass. So if you will go through this research with multi-centers multi uh, study, I think this is something that we could offer 
for our children and for our countries that we face and answer the question, how condition is LV? I'm sorry to say, there is no answer until now. Is it clear that we have to work collectively on that? But we are safe if the baby is younger than three weeks. That was um, stated by, by um, evidence-based medicine, the baby is safe. But after that, we don't have really a question, uh, answer for that. Is that clear? OK. And then now with the TGA with the uh, intraventricular septum, the simple one, and we will go for the other. Any question? Is it clear? OK. TGA with BSD. I have to, ha to, uh, to look for this, uh, for this point. I have to find the diagnosis. I have to assess the BSD. I have to ask myself, is it blending or streaming? Is both the uh, terminology now uh, clear in your mind what blending is? Both circulation goes in, in both in, in the common chamber like, uh, like that and blend it with each other and uh, go for the pulmonary and aorta, what the streaming means. Exactly. Streaming in TGA is good or bad? Bad. Streaming in TGA is bad. And how to improve uh, uh, saturation? How to improve if we face a child that stream? What we sh should do? And the last question is AB condition. Uh, uh, is a question for the, for the baby with large BSD? No. Why not? No is a correct answer, but why? I don't hear. Uh, BSD, I guess the BSD is high pressure. Exactly. If we have a large BSD, this means equal pressure in the left ventricle and in the right ventricle. By mean or another, LV is supporting the aorta. He sees the, the, the pressure of the aorta. So it's not, a, it's, not, it's not a question in that. So the last one is not a question. We will go for the first four. OK. Important information about the BSD, we have to, it, uh, to mention the type of the BSD, location, number of defects. If you find the defect, it doesn't mean it's the only or the sole BSD. You might have a multiple and you have to find it. Okay, this is again a standard view. We have here uh, left ventricle supporting the pulmonary, the bifurcating one, and this is the right ventricle. And you see here we have, I have a BSD. Okay, this is one of uh, the view should be uh, detected mostly by uh, by echo. Here we have subcostal view. We have here LV giving a branching uh, artery, and this is the RV giving an arched one. So this is the scordian ventricular arterial connection, and we have here BSD. Okay, and BSD here is a site of. Um, Okay. This is another view that we have here. Again, we have here the RV, and this is the aorta, and this is the pulmonary. We have here a BSD of less hemodynamic significance because it's trying to close by the subtracuspid tissue, but we call it also a BSD. Okay. Sometimes, as we see by echo, we can see the defects and very easy to find it, and you can sweep the ventricle and we find multiple BSD, but sometimes it's very tricky to see the apical BSDs or uh, if you have a suspicion about that, CT is your imaging modality. You do much slice CT, much slice CT is the 3D. So for example, you see here uh, um, a BSD between the both ventricle, but you went perpendicular or orthogonal about that, you discover it's not that small, but it's bigger BSD. So if you have a suspicion about difficult access BSD, CT will be of high resolution, not MRI. MRI is good temporary resolution, good about the, the movement, but not about the anatomy. Okay, if you ask about CT and TGA, please ask it for a gated, gated CT. Usually the babies for the extra cardiac uh, anomalies like coarctation or abnormal pulmonary veins or any side outside the heart, it is safer and lower dose radiation to do non-gated CT, and this is common practice. But if you would like to detect structure intracardia, please ask to do a gated multi-slice CT about that, because if it's not gated, it's not linked to the ECG, it will be blurred. 
So sometimes you miss an important finding intracardiac because the image is not that clear. Okay. If you do gated, what gated means, means that I scan in the whole cardiac cycle, in systole and in diastole. So here, after the R interval, it comes the systolic phase, and um, somewhere in the middle, it will be starting of the systolic phase. Usually, in uh, CT, we divided the whole RR interval, the whole cardiac cycle, by 10 by percent. So we divided it to 10 to 10 segments, and we call it 0 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, and in the end, roughly. Up to 50% from the cardiac cycle, it is systolic, and the 60%, 70%, 80%, it will be the systolic one. If you would like to see a muscular BSD, do you would like to see it in systole or in diastole? Systole. Why diastole? Um, it's systole, and Exactly. In systole, it will be less in size because it's contracted, and not in the accurate side, but in diastole, the heart is full, and you see it. So my advice, if you have a difficult uh, BSD or a suspicious about muscular BSD somewhere, ask for multi slice CT, not an MRI. Ask for a gated multi slice CT. Assess the BSD in diastole, not in systole, because in systole the heart will be shrunken, the heart will be, will be contracted, the BSD might mess or be smaller or assessed in a smaller size. Okay. Again. This is blending and streaming. If I find a baby with blending, so the cyanosis is not my problem. It will be in higher saturation. But if I find a baby that have a large BSD and he have a bad streaming or unfavorable streaming and saturation is in fetus, what shall I do to improve the saturation? Yes, see? Yes, create a mixing, create another way for mixing because this is not a good site for mixing. So, in my early practice, when I find the TGA with large BSD and they ask for a Rushkin, I said, okay, I have a large BSD, why do you with a Rushkin? The, if I compare the size of BSD and compare the size of Rushkin, does it Rushkin? It was not clear in my mind when you do it. But when I understand the physiology of streaming, so actually, they blend, they did it, they, they meet each other, but for a reason or, or another, they didn't blend with each other, it's just three. So create another mixing on the arterial, uh, on the atrial level. So don't don't just be surprised if they have a TGA with large BSD and the pediatric cardiologist ask for a rush kin. So again, to improve the mixing, it's more stable to do with balonic receptors to do a rush kin, even if you have a large BSD, but baby three. How, I, how, how could I define that the baby stream? By? The saturation, just by measuring saturation and lactic acid and that stuff. Okay. I will not go through this in this lecture. I will preserve it for, for part two from this lecture. If you have a BSD and you have different resistance between the pulmonary and the aorta, doesn't matter is it stream or is it blending for that, but you have a vascular bed with low resistance, and you have a, a, that's a pulmonary, and you have another vascular bed with high resistance. So the flow preferentially will go more to the pulmonary. So I have over flooded pulmonary, and I'm afraid about the changes in the pulmonary vascular bed that I meant the pulmonary vascular obstructed. It might be vascular obstruction, but it might be irreversible, and the baby is asymmetric. So by mean or another, I would like to quantify the pulmonary flow and the aortic flow. The QP, the pulmonary effective flow, and the systemic. Like any other BD, you remember the left and, side, left, uh, left and right chunks in the, in the previous lecture? So in a TGA with BD, I need to measure the QPQS. Okay. Cat is not your is not your option in that baby. I will describe in part two why because it's more technical details. So fake method by casterization is not a method to do in a TGA exchange. It will give numbers. Any any numbers will give some numbers, but this number is totally meaningless in the TGA with BSD. Your method is do it is cardiac MRI. If your question in TGA with BSD to measure the flow the QPQS, do an MRI, because the MRI is the only method to measure the flow, but CAS estimate the flow. 
So MRI measure the left ventricular mass, echo estimate the mass. MRI measure the flow, but first estimate the flow. So just 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 uh, summarize that in your mind. In TGA with BSD, do MRI for QPQS, and you have a question about the pressure, combine work cap. This is very common practice in Aswan Heart Center. If you have a TGA with BSD, we put the child for general anesthesia and send it for MRI to do QBQS and send it for cath lab just to measure the pressure. MRI measure the flow but does not measure the pressure until now. In TGA physiology, fake method is not accurate. In part two, inshallah next week, I will start in details why we are against to do a fake method in TGA with BSD. But I found that if I uh, uh, squeeze it in this lecture would be too much information. So just photo memory for that. TGA with large BSD, fake method is not a suitable method to measure QPQS. If you have a question about the QPQS, do an MRI. I will explain it in part two. John. We are almost done in this lecture. The difficult part is already busted. Now we're done with TGA with the integrated ventricular system and TGA with BSD. If you have a TGA, BSD, and coarctation, what is the role of imaging? By QR, you expect it. If you have this QR, if you do double R by echo, you will find that gradient and solve it. The baby have a QR, right? This is in normal circulation. That if you have QR, just is a normal routine <coughs> about that. But it's not a TGA itself. Why? If you have a TGA, BSD, and coarctation, usually you don't have a TGA with QR. You have a TGA, BSD, and coarctation. So systemic circulation have a higher resistance and now we have a co-arc so have more pressure so the blood will go preferentially to the pulmonary they cross the bsd and go to the pulmonary more and more blood actually it's low resistance and in the presence of co patient it will be lower lower resistance in pulmonary so actually less blood will go through the aorta and you will not find a gradient so don't depend on a gradient in tga if you have a tga physiology with BSD, and you have a suspicious about the co don't depend on the gradient, you will not get enough gradient about that. You might get something about 20, 25. You, you say it is mild partition, but it's not. Your methods, again, is multi-slice CT, not an MRI. It's a high spatial resolution. Just to do a quick MRI. If you don't have intracardiac question about that and you are right, just do it non-gated. It's okay to do it non-gated because it's extracardiac structure, it's not, it doesn't move, so you don't have to link it by ECG. Just do it a quick aortic angiography about that, and you will find the coarctation to measure it. How I define the coarctation about that? Most accurate way to do it is Z-score. Just to do it by any R against the body surface area. If it's lower than minus two, it is abnormal. So it's lower than minus two, it's minus three or minus four or something. Yeah. More, more numbers, more numbers. So that if you don't have this score, it shouldn't be the case. If you're treating the children, you have to have, you have to stick to this score. But roughly, we say it's less than 50% from the previous segment. So if you measure it the, the, in the isthmus, it should be less than 50% from the asymmetry. You got that? Okay. But I do encourage people just to use this score. This score is it's an easy in every this is the point about the TGA BSD QR. If you have a TGA, TGA BSD, you back to number two. You have to find the diagnosis. You have to allocate the BSD and type, number, and location. You have to, to, to check is it blending or streaming and how to improve uh, the situation. And uh, this is the fundamental issue about that. And if you have a coordination, you have to add the CT in that. Okay. Now, in the last, in the, in the last one, TGA, BSD, elective obstruction. You have any question about uh, what that is? Okay. TGA, BSD, back to number two. You have to fulfill the criteria about the BSD, and now the elective obstruction. Okay. In the TGA, BSD, elective obstruction, we have to define the type of elective obstruction and the site. And we have to ask ourselves is that AB could find a way to be tunable, to be connected to the aorta. This is the two questions that we have to answer about that. From Mahatam's lecture in the uh, in the last week, what is the type of any YouTube structure? Dynamic. The, exactly. We have a dynamic and we have an anatomical. Dynamic means 
that the LBT, the LB to the pulmonary, actually no anatomical obstruction, no obstruction in that, but but the septum movement do it that. So dynamic, this is this how dynamic obstruction looks like. Look for that. This is the right ventricle hypertrophied because it's supporting the systemic circulation. And we have here, this is the septum, and septum is bowing towards this, the anterior leaflet of the mitra. So we have bowing of the, uh, of the septum, but the pathway from the LV to the pulmonary artery is clear. So th this is dynamic obstruction. The dynamic obstruction is not present at birth, but it appears several weeks later. It's gradually progressed. And the more dynamic LVT obstruction that you get, the more hypoxia and desaturation that you get. When they do the arterial swatch, and just they correct the baby without, without doing anything, just the septum is going to the other side and nothing is really matters about this baby, baby will be okay. Okay, if we have anatomical obstruction, so we have something abnormal that obstructed the way. The, it could be bad blood, just that valve is thickened and doomed in, in that. And it could be not the valve, but it's subvalve blood. Subvalve blood could be fibrous shell, could be abnormal things for apparatus. Uh, we have tissue tags from the tricuspid. So if you have an anatomical LVH obstruction, you have to have this checklist in your mind. Don't say it's just in PS. If you have a TGA, TGA with LVT obstruction, TGA-VZ with, with LVT obstruction, you have to state, is it valvular or subvalvular? Because each item of that, as we will mention next uh, lecture, will have a different location. So if you have a valvular PS, you have to state it that it's valvular PS. If it's subvalvular, you have to discuss with the surgeon, is it resectable or not? We can resect this obstruction safely without any damage of the ventricle or LVOT or the AV valve, the tricuspid valve or not. And you have to state, yes, it's resectable or mostly it's resectable or no, it's not resectable. So you have anatomical, you have to have this chart in your mind. It's valvular or subvalvular and subvalvular could be resectable or not. Okay. This is an apical fold. We have here left atria. We have here left ventricle. This is the mitra, and this is the pulmonary. What do you see in that in that one? We have here the valve, and the obstruction is mainly is subvalvular. You see it? We have here some tags from here. We have here deviation of the septum, but the valve looks not bad. So we have to report to that to the surgeon that we have here an obstruction in the LVT that either it's valvular. So this valve couldn't be used anyway, or it's sub subvalvular, the valve is okay, or okayish, but it is subvalvular. Is it clear? Shall I repeat it again? Okay, so this should be in your mind, anatomical LV tube structure. Is it valvular, subvalvular, subvalvular? Is it resectable, just a fibrous shell, fish tags, or it's the subvalvular apparatus that it couldn't be resected, okay? Okay, in TGA uh, with, with that, we have to have some imagination. Hatem would like to, to have it like a, this easy, just a line, just we close the BSD. We have here a BSD and this TGA. So LB is giving the pulmonary and RB is giving the aorta, this transposition. So I have to have some imagination. Could we, by way or another, connect this LB to that aorta? Actually, it's very difficult. Until now, we don't have uh, an objective measurement. Some literature in old days say this, this distance should be at least equal to the aortic distance, but we didn't have enough evidence about that. And so totally, totally to the surgeon experience and what they found about that. So until now, we don't have this lecture to have an objective. So you have to have some imagination, some drawing about that. But recently, we started to have this 3D modeling based on CT. So we have this structure. We could, by BDF, this is a BDF, just create like a, a small simulator from the heart. So the surgeon,
can do it experimentally. So this is the CT. So the surgeon started to look inside. So they do it like a batch. So they know exactly the distance. They know exactly the size of the batch about that. You could have in your computer like that, just computer games, or you could have printed like this way. So they can have the heart in their hands and do it experimentally to do it for that. I do recommend that in the difficult cases, because uh, as Hakim might uh, mention before, and the next lecture, inshallah, we will mention, we call this operation is to tunnel the, the far away aorta, that's the only operation. This is by ventricular repair, and we would like to have it for our children if it's possible. If it's not possible, we don't want to stuck in the uh, in the theater that's not tunable. So do invest in that. In that, do a CT. I'm just uh, this is um, some software. Some of it today, but most of them are free nowadays. So you can do it by yourself to do it like that. It is still expensive in that era to have this printable heart by 3D, but I think in the coming era it would be cheap as the much slice CT and CMR. But think about it and keep it in your mind. Okay, now we recap. Remember, we mentioned poor terminology, shunting, mixing, and blending and streaming. Shunting does not exist in TGA physiology, but mixing and streaming and blending do exist. And about the imaging, you have to ask yourself what type of TGA that I do practice with that. In TGA with impact ventricular septum, simple TGA. You have to find the diagnosis. You have to check the site of mixing. In simple TGA, it wouldn't be a BSD, but it will be ASD or BDA. Crown risk, question mark, about where you are in your training level is for the experts about the cardiology or imaging. Lift ventricular mass, still question mark, don't listen to the 35 gram stuff. It was an overrated paper. Coronary arteries will be by much slice CT of needle. Left ventricular mass, CMR. If you remember, I didn't mention in preoperative assessment of TGA cardiac MRI, except in that position. So, a very unusual practice to send a baby for cardiac MRI under this position and the next one when it comes to PGPS. If you have a TGA with large BSD, you have to find the diagnosis. You have to look carefully for the anatomy of the BSD. Usually, echo is enough. If you have a difficult BSD, think about multi-slice CT. Multi-slice CT should be gated and should be in the stolic phase. Assess both of them. You have to assess if this child blended or streaming. If the child is streaming, do the rush test. And if the QBQS is a question for your surgeon and for the patient, do a cardiac MRI, not a cat. In TGA with VED and qualification, look, the, look for number two, plus you do a CT to, do, to look for the arch anomalies. Don't depend on the gradient, on the echo, because it will deceive you, it will be underestimated. TGA with VED and the LVET obstruction, you have to decide, is it dynamic or anatomical? If it's anatomical, you have to decide it's a valvular or subvalvular. If it's a subvalvular, you have to mention resectable or not. The unresectable that have a relation to subvalvular apparatus from the mitral valve. This is the only unresectable one. And you have to do some imagination, review the modern technology about the 3D printing. As I mentioned, many softwares now are free on free access. So you can do a CT and just play it around it. Is the BSD stunnable to the aorta or not? This something should be in your echo and your much slice CT. So we can use the CT as much as we can for special for the anatomy. MRI have two position. If you're question about the LV mass, unfortunately we don't have a figure. So still in research area, not in clinical. But what we have in the clinical, if you have a large BSD and your question is about the QBQ. That was all for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.